interesting facts about famous people. Underrated Westerns of the 50s. The heyday for the Western genre, the 1950s. More Westerns were made during this decade than any other. Some of the greatest Westerns were made then. I've taken 10 movies from this decade that I consider underrated, not ranked. I'm looking forward to your comments on this one. If you enjoyed this video, take a look at my channel for many more. The link is in the description. 310 to Yuma, 1957. Broke, small time rancher, Dan Evans, is hired by the stagecoach line to put big time captured outlaw leader, Ben Wade, on the 310 train to Yuma. But Wade's gang tries to free him. Director, Delma Daves. Cast, Glenn Ford, Van Heflin, Felicia Farr, Leora Dana. It's basically a noir western, and it has bags of tension and atmosphere in addition to the top draw performances from both Heflin and Ford. Ride Lonesome, 1959. Bounty hunter, Randolph Scott, escorts a killer, James Best, to be tried for murder, but allows the man's outlaw brother, Lee Van Cleef, to catch up with them to have a showdown over a previous shocking murder. Director, Bud Bodicher. Cast, Randolph Scott, Karen Steele, Hernell Roberts, James Best. Lean, taut and spare. Not a word or scene is wasted. And there are great performances from the whole cast, but particularly Pernell Roberts, who plays off Coburn and Scott expertly. The Naked Spur, 1953. A bounty hunter trying to bring a murderer to justice is forced to accept the help of two lesser than trustworthy strangers. Director, Anthony Mann. Cast, James Stewart, Janet Lee, Robert Ryan, Ralph Meeker. Just who are the good guys and who are the bad guys in this movie, you'll know by the end, but it's quite a tough journey, as is often the case when Man and Stuart team up. The Furies, 1950. A firebrand heiress clashes with her tyrannical father, a cattle rancher who fancies himself a Napoleon but their relationship turns ugly only when he finds himself a new woman. Director, Anthony Mann. Cast, Barbara Standwick, Wendell Corey, Walter Houston, Judith Anderson. Standwick and Houston, both excellent, dominate this picture, but the lesser characters are all very well played too. Seven Men From Now 1956. A former sheriff blames himself for his wife's death during a Wells Fargo robbery and vows to track down and kill the seven men responsible. Director, Bud Bottiger. Cast, Randolph Scott, Gail Russell, Lee Marvin, Walter Reed. Scott is out for revenge, looking for the seven men responsible for his wife's death during a robbery. It also has one of the best villains of the era in Lee Marvin, who is absolutely fantastic. A menacing performance which keeps you on edge at all times. Day of the Outlaw, 1959. Blaze Durrett is a rancher at odds with homesteaders when outlaws hold up the small town. The outlaws are held in check only by their notorious leader, but he is diagnosed with a fatal wound and the town is a powder keg waiting to blow. Director, Andre Ditoff. Cast, Robert Ryan, Earl Ives, Tina Louise, Alan Marshall, Robert Ryan's best performance in any movie, cast as a self-centred bully, risking everything for the community when a bunch of deserters occupy the town. Earl Ives is fantastic as the conflicted villain. The picture conveys a real sense of threat and menace. Man of the West, 1958. A reformed outlaw becomes stranded after an aborted train robbery with two other passengers and is forced to rejoin his old outlaw band. Director, Anthony Mann. Cast, Gary Cooper, Julie London, Lee J. Cobb, Arthur O'Connell. Although Coop is too old for the part, he was older than Cobb who plays his uncle. Lee J. Cobb is quite terrifying as the villain. Julie London gives a great performance which captures her character's toughness and vulnerability. 
Coop is great as usual, as the man who can't escape his past. The Man from Laramie, 1955. Newcomer, Will Lockhart, defies the local cattle baron and his sadistic son by working for one of his oldest rivals. Director, Anthony Mann. Cast, James Stewart, Arthur Kennedy, Donald Crisp, Kathy O'Donnell. I came 1,000 miles to kill you, says Stewart's typically driven character, out for revenge over his brother's death, and boy does he earn it. The scene with the mules on the salt flats, where his problems begin, is particularly memorable. Donald Crisp is an unyielding and honourable cattleman, but it's Arthur Kennedy who puts in the best performance, a conflicted bad guy in a western. The Hanging Tree, 1959, character study of a doctor who saves a local criminal from a mob who are trying to hang him, but then tries to control the life of the young man, realising that he can exploit his secret. Directors, Delma Daves, Carl Malden, Vincent Sherman. Cast, Gary Cooper, Maria Schell, Carl Malden, George C. Scott. Coop plays a doctor traumatised by his past tragedy, who's rescued by an unlikely pair of strays he allows into his life. A melodramatic ending, but works really well. Carl Malden makes for a great bad guy, and watch out for a deranged George C. Scott. Why? The Tall T, 1957. Oh, An independent so former father. ranch foreman so? is kidnapped so along with an heiress, who is being held tall. ransom for a trio of ruthless so outlaws. See? Director, Bud Bodicher. <laughs> His Cast, daughter. Randolph Scott, Richard Byrne, Maureen O'Sullivan, Arthur Honeycutt. Starting off light-hearted, but darkens quite quickly as Scott's character finds himself caught up in a kidnapping and cold-blooded murder. Once again, Richard Byrne is a great villain. Thanks for your time today. I hope you like the video. I appreciate likes, shares and subscribers. Don't forget to hit the notification button to get my new videos. Drop me your comments. Bye for now. See you again soon. Please take time to take a look at my Facebook page for new information.